Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of KJV BibleBelievers.com. On this program, we begin part one of our two part study titled The Cost of Reward. Our text is Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 40. Mark chapter 10. Beginning in verse uh, 35, where we left off in our previous study, we're going to talk about the cost of reward. The cost of reward. I have to start to kind of get your mind in the right uh, frame here. Do you serve with a desire for reward from God? You should. Uh, there's this sanctimonious extra spiritual attitude that you hear in some of the songs and there's some truth to it but if people sing I don't care what you give me Lord I just want to be there and I'm not saying that's a totally wrong attitude because it is that we are thankful just to be there but the Bible teaches that once you're saved you should want to serve the Lord for reward so if anybody tells you otherwise, tell them thanks but no thanks. I'm going to follow the Bible. Amen? Amen? We're going to follow the Bible. So if you want reward in this life, then you got trouble unless your reward conforms to what we studied in the previous study. Your reward in this life isn't what the flesh wants. Your reward in this life is what God wants you to have. But there is reward in the next life. And uh, we should want to serve the Lord for that purpose. So then we see this question, and these guys are criticized for this, and it's really not fair because we're going to see Jesus doesn't criticize them. Beginning in verse uh, 35 and 36, read that with me. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? He doesn't say, uh, you know, don't ask, don't be asking me for stuff. <laughs> and that, that, get that through your mind. Because a lot of people don't pray because they think God's up there saying, eh, now, come on, don't be asking me for things. Now, it might be because uh, uh, relationships you have on earth. I've seen people who project maybe their relationship with their father or their mother or just the circumstances, people who, were, uh, who had to suffer through the Great Depression. You didn't ask for anything because you knew you weren't going to get it. And uh, I've heard the stories of my grandparents come around Christmas time and if they got an orange for Christmas, that was a, that was a big deal. Because they wouldn't see oranges the rest of the year. And that's the kind of thing then that sometimes we project upon God. Well, God's not going through a Great Depression. Amen? Amen. Amen? So you can ask God for what you need. Now the problem we have in this generation is we've got a bunch of spoiled brats who want everything they want. And I could show you some of the rank heretics. We've watched some of the videos this week that, you know, Mike Murdoch and, and, uh, and I don't know, all the names of all these guys even on there now. I, 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 you just turn it on and they're all about money and greed. Those guys are of the devil, people. I want you to understand that. When a man wants money, when a man talks about money the way this guy does, when someone like Benny Hinn says, I don't want streets of gold, I want it here and now, that man's full of the devil. Well, I'm not, I'm not preaching that nonsense. I'm preaching that God says He will provide what you need and you have rewards, but Jesus said not to store them here, but to store them in heaven. That's where our direction is this morning. So Jesus answers uh, this question by saying, well, what would you that I should do? And He's not trying to trap them. You're going to see that Jesus wants to answer our petitions. We pray, folks. 
you'll go to a lot of churches where they, they won't even take prayer requests. Other churches where they'll take them, but they don't really pray over them um, because they're in a hurry. You know, it's got to be done in 45 minutes. We purposely chase people like that off. Yep. I'm sorry, but if you want in and out here under 45 minutes, go somewhere else to church because, well, that's, you're just play acting. That's not really church. I'm, the, I'm here to tell you that if you went to the church services in the first century, they went on all day. Why? Because they weren't worried about what was on TV. They weren't involved in all the worldly things that everybody's all worried about. They were coming together as a body, as a family. And when they came together, they, were, they, they prayed. They didn't just play act. When they sing the hymns, I want to ask you, I don't want to show a hands. How many of you even paid attention to the words you sang this morning? I'm not asking for hands. Put those down. <laughs> I said, I'm not asking for hands. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> that is hilarious. So as you're singing those lyrics, if you're not, I'm just I'm trying to share something that was very useful for me when I first started out in the in the faith. You know, I'd be up there singing, and one day one day some preacher said, you know, the same question, asked the same question. Did you pay attention to what you're singing? And I was thinking, you know, I don't even I did I didn't. I didn't raise my hand, by the way, but I was just thinking, thinking that I didn't even. You know what he said? You just wasted your time. God didn't hear you. If you are singing the hymns and you're not paying attention to the words, you're blowing hot air. Amen. So when you sing those hymns, you ought to be singing them to God, which means you have to pay attention to what you're singing. And so you ought to be singing like it's a prayer. I'm just giving you a little bit of advice here. Don't get mad at me. I'm not trying to stomp your toes. Although I will admit it's awful fun. <laughs> but I want you to think about that. Whether it's in church or you're at home or whatever, when you sing, you sing from the heart. The words just come out of your mouth, but it's supposed to come from your heart. Right. Amen? Amen? Amen. Verse 37, they answered Jesus. Read that with me. They said unto Him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. Now, if you've been reading through your Bible, you've probably recognized this happened either one other time or the same story told differently. In the other story in Matthew, their mother gets involved. I think it's two different stories. Um, a lot of times you'll hear people dogmatically state they know one way or the other, and they don't. Just, But I think that it's more than likely two different stories. And uh, these guys didn't really get their answer the first time that they were hoping to get. So they came back and asked again. And so they asked uh, that Jesus would grant it for them to sit one on the right hand, one on the left. And you notice that Jesus does not rebuke them for the request. In the next verse, verse 38, read it with me. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Hmm. Still not the answer they were probably hoping to hear. He says, you know not what you ask. And then he says, can ye? <laughs> See, serving the Lord is about sacrifice. Jesus turns their question around to the matter of sacrifice. He turns it on them to answer the question. He says, uh, can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? Be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. And of course, that's the cup of persecution and suffering. So most Christians that I have ever known will not get reward in heaven. Because they're not willing to suffer. They're not willing to suffer persecution. They denounce every little thing that comes against them that they think is bad and accuse the devil of bringing it on them. And i got news for you. A lot of times that's God. 
God will allow these things to happen to you. And when a preacher or teacher tells you otherwise, they're speaking false doctrine straight from Lucifer. That includes most of the people on TBN today. They are not preaching the truth to you. They want to preach what you want to hear because we're in the last days when people will gather to themselves teachers having itching ears. They will not endure sound doctrine. They want somebody to tell them that if you become a Christian and you follow God, He's going to make life perfect for you. You're just not going to have any problems and everything's going to be great. That's what they want to hear, so they gather teachers. That's why they have the biggest ministries. That's why their budgets are into the millions and they have their own private jets. They talk and they tell people what they want to hear. And it's just a shame that so many people today follow those people. Shame on you if you are. Amen. If you go out of here through the week and you're listening to Joyce Myers, shame on you. That Jezebel is spending millions of dollars to live like a princess and a queen and you're dumb enough to give her your money? Shame on you. Shame on you if you go out of here and you send money to Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland or any of those nutcases like Creflo Dollar who are living like Lucifer today. Shame on you. Because there are hungry people who need that money. There are lost people who need that money to go into Bibles and to food and to shelter and not into their bank accounts. Amen. And if you're sending money to those people, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ and be ashamed of yourself. Amen. And don't think I'm trying to get your money. I don't want your money. If your money comes with that kind of motivation, it stinks. You'd put it in that box and we'd have to close the door because it'd smell like cow manure. There you go. The only money that this ministry wants and the only money God wants is money that is given out of a cheerful heart to fund the ministry. And ministry isn't jet airplanes, $3,000 suits, trips around the world, staying in plush hotels, and all the things these guys are doing. But you know why people are given to them? Because they preach that if you give a thousand dollars to my ministry, God will give you something. Yes. That's the greed that motivates the giving that then makes Benny and the Jets. <laughs> hey man, we can close. Let's close the prayer. <laughs> you can't tell. I got something up my crawl this morning over something that happened this week. So, and it just happened to be studying this, and I'm thinking, what a, what a. Phew. Verse 39. Um, look what the, the response. Now, this is a, There's nothing wrong with this response if you if it's true. Read it with me. Verse 39. And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. Look closely at what you just read. He asked them, Can you, if you want to sit on my right and my left, can you drink of that cup? Can you be baptized with that baptism that I am baptized with? They said we can. Now that reminds me, as you read through the Bible, you go back to the Old Testament, you remember when the Mosaic Covenant was brought before the people. Not only in front of Moses, but after Moses died, Joshua came before him again. And Joshua even said, you people, you're a bunch of stiff-necked hypocrites. You can't do it. And they said, no, we can, we will. And Joshua said, the Lord be witness against you today that you said that. That's kind of what reminds me here, but you know, the interesting thing is there's something that happened to these fellows in a few chapters we're going to see that Jesus, after He was crucified and buried, and they were down in the dumps and thought it was over with, something happens. Jesus risen from the dead. And they see the resurrected Jesus. And on the day of Pentecost, they're at the temple and the Holy Spirit is poured out. And they are then filled with the Spirit of God and they go out and they preach the gospel. There's a huge change that takes place in these guys. Right now though, 
They're all talk. Why? Well, we're going to see. They, they, when Jesus is crucified, they don't stand there and say, I'm with Him! Take me in! No, don't leave without me! <laughs> no, there's the exact opposite. So, just for uh, free of charge here, if you're going, to stand before the, you're going to stand for the Lord today, you better do it in His power. You best be born again, sincere in your faith, and filled with His words. Jesus said, these words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. You have better be walking the Spirit-filled life if you're going to stand for the Lord. Otherwise, you're going to be embarrassed. The price He's talking about. All twelve apostles would suffer and eleven would be murdered. Let me tell you something. You think, you, you, you think you're one of the top Christians full of faith? and If so, then what's liable to happen to you is that you're going to face something that's going to involve suffering, persecution, possibly death. These guys, that's the big leagues, folks. You think you're something? That's the big leagues. And 11 of them are murdered. Just review a few of these just in case you're not aware of the uh, accounts of these guys that we call apostles. James, the son of Zebedee, ten years after Stephen was stoned to death, they beheaded James. And I guess if you believe that nonsense on the TBN, I like to call TBN the blasphemy network. Think about it. There's one for you, Mark. Yeah, you TBN. You now, if you believe that, you have to believe James lacked faith. <coughs> he should have just claimed it. Should have named it and claimed it. What about Philip? Well, he was scourged, imprisoned, and then stoned to death in 54 AD. Matthew was slain in Ethiopia. That halberd, which looks like a big axe is what it looks like, in 70 AD. Andrew, you'll see the cross of St. Andrew, they call it. It looks like an X. And that's how they crucified him in Edessa, which is today modern Turkey. Uh, Peter was crucified and he, de he, he demanded, but uh, they, they granted his request that he be crucified upside down. And he said because he, he, did not, he wasn't worthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Lord. 64 AD. Thomas uh, was in India and the pagan priests rioted and impaled him with spears. That, oh, that, by the way, uh, that Thomas, that you, you always hear preachers knock, call him Doubting Thomas. Thomas was uh, a strong man of faith. And, uh, and we're going to study some about Thomas in the future, but Thomas was not Doubting Thomas. Thomas was a, a good character. He said, uh, I'm a Jew. Show me the proof. He was a Berean. Huh? He was a Berean. Yes. He wasn't doubting Thomas. He was, show me evidence, Thomas. <laughs> he was from Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> the show me state. Well, that's what Joseph Smith says. That's where the New Jerusalem will be. <laughs> Bartholomew. He was beaten, flayed, and crucified in the same country, India. Uh, same country as... Uh, Thomas. Simon Zelotes was crucified in Britain, modern what's modern Great Britain today, 74 A.D. Yeah, there's there's several other <coughs> gruesome stories of of the. But wasn't one of the twelve? Yeah. Matthias. Saul in half. Yeah. What happened to Matthias? Who took Jesus' fifth place? He was killed, but I can't remember the exact circumstance behind it. Do your homework. There you go. Ed loves that when I do that. I leave something hanging, he's got to go home and look it up. And... <laughs> Verse 40 now, read that with me. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Now, this is where a lot of people 
stumble because you see Jesus, who is God manifest in the flesh. He's the Son of God, but He's submissive to the will of the Father. Now that doesn't make sense to us because we're human. Stop trying to make God a human being. God is not you. God is not limited to you, the things you're limited to. God is God. You are human. Things that are different are not the same. All these things people get so hung up on, they've started whole religions on it. And it's just that because they, they demand that God be exactly like them. And here you have the, the Trinity, and uh, people have a real problem with Jesus being submissive to the will of the Father because they think in their mind that means He's lesser. And that's why, that's why a lot of uh, the women in this world refuse to take their role as a wife and a mother. Because that means they have to follow the lead of the husband, and that means they have a different role than the man, and so they interpret that to mean they are being forced to be the lesser, which means that they're, you know, somehow being, you know, abused or whatever. And it's, it's, you know, that, well, that's, that's just because they're fleshly. That's just carnal thinking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's just the way it is. Did you ever notice that the people with the big hang-ups regarding the Trinity also have big problems submitting to God in their own lives? Right. You'll find that. There's a, there's a one-to-one weird relationship there that when people have a big hang-up on God the Father uh, being over the Son and, and the Son submitting to His will, even though they are co-equal in their nature, there is a hierarchy. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the people who capitalize on that, and excuse, they end up excusing themselves. They end up using that as an excuse to be rebellious. And if you look around, you'll see it. And uh, I think that might be why Joyce Myers has a ministry. Amen, brother. That's good preaching. Why? Because Joyce refuses to submit to her husband. Joyce rejects the Trinity. And Joyce refuses to submit herself to any testing of her ministry. That's just one example. She teaches a thing called modalism, denies the Trinity. Uh-huh. What is that? What's the... that uh, Jesus is not different from the Father and that there is no hierarchy type of relationship. Wow. T.D. Jakes teaches that too. That's why, he, he's, that's why his crowd is almost all women and he sells all the books to the women. Woman, thou art loosed. You know, I could, I'd love to, <laughs> love to preach like T.D. Jakes. I'm here to tell you that... Uh, you ever seen that? Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Man, I would have been a great charismatic preacher. I just can't preach that nonsense. <laughs> Well, that's the stories that come out. I don't know about that, though. But You, you see, the, the main groups that have a trouble with all this submission stuff, feminists, sodomites, liberals, atheists, cultists, I know that may seem redundant, but they, not all are the, you know, the same. And they, they, all, they all come back to these issues of submission where God has said, you have to listen to me. The feminists, they don't want anything to do with the woman's role. That means that they won't listen to their husband and a lot of them are lesbians. You go to the leadership in the feminist movement, a lot of the women who have followed this stuff are suckers. They don't even realize that they've been following a bunch of uh, lesbians. <laughs> then you have sodomites. They demand that marriage isn't between a man and a woman. That marriage is just two consensual adults. So they have a problem with that. And they, they rebel against uh, the, the role of sex for procreation, you know, and all the things that God intended. They're totally in rebellion against it. Liberals in general. You talk to a liberal, they don't want to respect the Bible, they don't believe the Trinity, they don't believe in salvation by grace, and they want to use the Constitution for toilet paper. That's a liberal. Huh? Yeah, well that's really what all these make themselves. Their own, their own opinion is Scripture and they are their own God. Atheists, cultists, the same way. April Fool's Day? Yeah, we... <laughs> Amen. 
<laughs> Unlike unbelieving and wicked men, the Son came as a servant Amen. to do the will of the Father. If you're in rebellion against God, and by the way, this could be nothing to do with man and woman. This just be God has a call on your life and you're refusing to do it. Every one of us have a calling to share the gospel with those we love. And if you won't do that, you're in rebellion against God. And you don't tell me you love those people you don't tell uh, the gospel to because if you love them, you can't stand the idea of them going to hell. So if you love these people, you're going to tell them the gospel. And most Christians I know, according to the statistics, there's some that say less than 2% share the gospel with the lost. That means 98% of professing Christians are in rebellion against God. Yep. Now, Jesus came to earth to submit to the will of the Father. That's the whole reason He came. Philippians chapter 2. Go ahead and turn there real quick. We'll read three verses out of there. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 6 is where we'll start. And you think you're too good to submit to God's will. You think you're better than Jesus. Because Jesus came and submitted to God's will. Um, you women, you want to rule and reign? You'll get your chance. You'll get your chance in the millennium. But now it's a time for you to follow God and submit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Come on, Thomas. I know you want to say it real loud. <laughs> Philippians 2, beginning verse 6 and 7. Read that with me. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of the servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Now, if you have a new version, you see how they totally butcher that. And if you don't have a new version, then just trust me, they butcher that. But Jesus, being in the form of God, He was God, manifest in the flesh, and yet He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, being a man. But, but, see that word, but, made Himself of no reputation. That concludes part one of our two-part study in Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 40, titled, The Cost of Reward. Our website is kjvbiblebelievers.com, where we make all of our messages available for free. You can download them in MP3 format, and most are available for viewing and streaming video. That address again is kjv. BibleBelievers.com. While there, you can click on the Contact Us button and send us an email, or you can email bbbfohio at yahoo.com. That address again is bbbf, the letter F, Ohio at yahoo.com. Or if you like, you could write us using the U.S. Postal Service. Send your letter to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio. 43085. That address again is P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. Jesus is coming soon. Are you saved? If not, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, His death, His burial, and His resurrection for eternal life today, and you are saved. On behalf of Bible Believers Fellowship, I am Pastor Greg, and we thank you for listening.